And uh, welcome those who are online. Uh, my topic today is giving to God first. And today we also change the, the order of service a bit. We, we, but we are, we, are, we are honest, we announce first. Let me tell you a joke. See, uh, an old pastor had been watching for a while. You know, uh, no, let me... See, once upon a time, in a far away country, not in Singapore, in a small church, there were three friends who always come to church together. And they always time their arrival after the collection of the offerings. That means they know the timing. Because church order are standard one. You know, they know when Alan collect, if not Alan is Ken, if not Ken is Stephen, you know, or Richard or somebody, you know. So they know the orders. So they time always so, uh, offering over, then they walk in. So the old pastor has been noticing for a while. <coughs> so he's been watching for a while and he wants to give these three congregants a surprise. So one Sunday, he purposely changed the order of service. So not knowing that this, not knowing, these three friends entered the service thinking that the offering was over. And the pastor stood up and announced the collection of the day's offering. You know what happened? The pastor thought that he had them cornered Immediately, one of the three, yeah? immediately, one of the three fainted. And then the other two carried him out. <laughs> okay, see? In Chinese, they say, Sang you know, Xia you If there is a scheme of things up, up in the, in the uh, level, then down below, we have a, you know, a method to counter. <laughs> well, I'm sure after when I do that, please don't faint. Now, giving to God is uh, something that uh, I, I try not to talk too much because as a pastor, money is a very sensitive thing. You know, uh, you talk too much, they think that, you know, uh, wow, the church always wants your money. Uh, does God need our money? Right? Uh, if, if your answer is yes, well, good. If your answer is no, uh, go and read my Facebook page right, for today's uh, synopsis. Uh, God really needs our money? Yes and no. God doesn't really need our money. He doesn't. Right? He owns the, the cattle on a thousand hills. Right? Why he needs our money? But then why God still wants us to give? Right? There must be good reason. And <coughs> giving to God first will receive a promise. You see, for those people who honor God and we give to God first, then you will definitely receive a promise. In Proverbs, which you all know very well, verses 9 and 10 says, Honor the Lord with your wealth, with the first fruits of all your crops. Then your barns will be filled to overflowing, and your vats will brim over with new wine. Now you notice here that God says, uh, Honor the Lord. We, 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 we honor God first when we, you know, to the, to the Israeli, to the God's people, at that time God says, before you store into your barns and your storehouses, your vats, vats are the container they use to contain vine, right? Barns are places they put their crops, you know, their vats, etc. <coughs> and God says, honor God. And then He says, your vats will be overflowing. Your bun will be overflowing and your vet will be flowing with new wine. Now, you notice something. God did not say that if you honor him first, you will have a good crop. Right? He didn't say that if you honor him first, you will have very good quality grapes or you will have a lot of grapes. Why did God say buns and vets? You know? You can have a good crop. I can have a good crop, grow a good crop. But it does not mean that our warehouse will be full. We may have good grapes. does not mean that our vets will be overflowing. This morning, uh, Pastor Ray, you know, shared a passage from Haggai. Haggai, you know, from Haggai, Haggai chapter 1. And Haggai chapter 1 says this. And yeah, I didn't collaborate with her. She, she shared that. And all the time she talked about God first, God first, you know. <laughs> She's always talking about God's name, but he's not talking God first. <coughs> and in Haggai, what did Haggai reprimanded the Israeli? 
God reprimanded the Israelites and said that, you know, you all build houses with panel, you know. Today means with panel houses and then with, you know, uh, good class renovation in short. I say, if I've forgotten my house, and God's house was laying in ruin for many years. They came back, they built uh, God's house for a while, and after that, they stopped. Now, they had good reason to stop it, because the king at that time stopped them. No one good, better reason. Since the king stopped them, they say, then we continue to stop. And after a while, they forget to continue. And so God says this. God says, you earn money and put inside pockets with holes. You know, it's very scary to earn money and put into pockets with holes. You know, one time, I remember many years ago, I was staying in Jalan Tentaram. It's a very poor area. And one night, I came home you know, after a meeting, and I was walking back to my, you know, the, the, the flats, and noticed there were a trail of coins. It was very exciting, you know, to pick other people's money. Oh, I was picked one by one, you know. Wow. So obviously, there was this one person who, whose pocket has a hole. And, and all the coins you now start dropping. And then I was picking, I was having the joy. I was building my joy on the foundation of somebody's sorrows. Right? It was my joy, but their sorrows. So I, I, cannot redeem, I cannot return the money, by the way. Right? Not that I don't want to, you know. But, uh, you know, at 11.30, mid midnight, there's not a soul on the street. Who do? I cannot stand out there. Hey, your money, ah, your money. Ah. No, nobody does that, right? So I, I really had the joy. So you see, put in pockets that we hold. Then God says here, if you honor the Lord, then God says, your vats where you store, your buns where you store your crops will be full. You may have a good crops, but there's no guarantee that your bun will be overflowing. You can have good Harvest the grapes, but it doesn't mean that you have new wine. That's the difference. Your ability to retain. And this is the promise. God says that you will learn to honor God first. Then God promised that we will have the ability to retain the wealth that we generate. Isn't it a good deal? Many people know how to make money. Because if they don't know, we teach them how, right? Everybody knows how to make money. But not everybody knows how to keep wealth. Not everybody's vats and buns are overflowing and flowing with new wine. So God here promised that learn to give God's first, the first fruits. You see, the first fruits are the best fruits, not the lousiest fruit. You know, in Chinese, uh, you all like durian, right? When, when durian season comes, uh, please Buy the durian during the beginning of the season. Don't buy the durians during the end of the season. Liulian Tao is better than Liulian Bui, you know. Right? If you are a Liulian uh, person. Uh. So, so, you see, the first fruits are the best. You see, I'm not the first fruit. You look at my size. I'm number five. My sister, my four sister, I got four other sisters. Everyone taller than me. You know, I'm like David, you know. I got so many brothers all. So, I'm not the first fruits. See, the first fruits are the best. Because your parents are the healthiest, so when they produce that time, all big size on. Right? Sometimes you look at the guy, you know whether he's the first fruits or not, you know. The word then there is very important. God said, here the word say, honor the Lord with all with your wealth and with the first fruits. Like then, then. You see the word then. You see, the, the word then is very important because it connects the blessing. So I'm sure we all want the blessing, right? A lot of times we want blessings, but we don't want responsibilities. It, it, it's great to enjoy blessings, but you know that in order for us to enjoy the blessings, then, then we must also exercise responsibility. So my, my encouragement is always learn to honour the Lord. Then our resources will be guaranteed. In fact, your wealth will be guaranteed. And you can test God and see. And I can share with you this. When I became a Christian many, many years ago, more than 50 years ago, my Bible study leader taught us how to tithe. You know, I was a student. I had $19 a month. So I tithed $1.90. What is $1.90? You, you don't know what to buy today, right? But $1.90 I tithed. It was not easy, you know. So I tithed. And, and, and from then onwards until today, I only can tell you this. 
Not one day in my life until now, uh, I ever stretch out my hand and borrow from someone and say, can you lend me $50? Can you lend me $10? I, I need to buy you know, my, for my lunch and uh, I need... No, 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 never. Never. Even when I was in the army, I took taxi. <laughs> you, know, you know how much your salary? I took taxi, okay? I go to camp taking taxi. I'm tithing soldier. <laughs> Never. God promised me. And I have seen it in my whole life. I'm not rich. But I must tell you, I'm not poor. See, God's blessing is fantastic. So learn to honor the Lord. Secondly, God feels very strongly about giving. God feels strongly about giving. Right? And I, I, if, I, if I don't tell you, I'm not truthful to you. Now, the well-known passage is Malachi, right? Malachi Verses 8, 3 verses 8 and 9 say, Should people cheat God? Yet you have cheated me. But you ask, what do you mean? When did we ever cheat you? Say, you have cheated me of the tithes and offerings due to me. You are under a curse, for your whole nation has been cheating me. Now, in fact, I'm very gracious. I use a softer version. If I use a King James version, they call them robbers. And so I thought, maybe today don't use robbers. <coughs> God says, people cheat them. The, the, the Jews at that time cheated God. How? Through tithes and through offering. See, God has a perfect economic plan for Israel. Israel has a perfect economic plan. 11 tribes support one tribe. And each give 10%. So the temple, the services of the Lord will never ever be in one. Eleven tribes support one tribe, Levi. That was a perfect economic system. But the people over time, they forgot. They forgot to tithe to the Lord. They forgot to, to, to offer. So what happens? The, the people who, the Levites and the priests, and so they have to return back to work because they, the, the, the system could not support them. So they had to return back to manual work. And, and, and therefore, spiritually, the people suffer. And so God used these strong words. Cheat. And as I say, in the King James, we say, you rob. You know, you know, rob is so terrible. That's why I try not to use the word. But I still cannot tahan must say it. Because then you rob me. I tell you one joke. I was serving the church upstairs, I tell you. Remember? That, that church is fantastic. You know? At one time, uh, we, we have one board, you know. We have two boards. We have two boards. One called tithers. The other one, robbers. <laughs> yeah, I'm not joking now. I'm not joking. Eh? Obviously, they didn't put robbers. Uh. They, 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 they put those people who did not tithe. <laughs> uh, I don't want to consider. No, no, don't, don't, don't do that, don't do that, don't do that, you know, please don't do that. Uh, uh, but see, God feels very strongly about giving. Uh, he called them cheaters. Now, I, I'm sure that you, you and I don't intentionally want to cheat God, right? I don't believe so. And can you trust someone who prefers? Can you? If you know that someone who has not, a, you may have some habits that are questionable, would you trust that person? I'll share with you one real experience. A tale of two helpers, domestic helpers, okay? And uh, I remember I had this domestic helper when my son came along. So last night I really resist having a domestic helper. And then when my son came along, I got no choice. So I hired a domestic helper. And this domestic helper came. Wow, within two hours, huh, my kitchen well organized, all clean up. I was so impressed. Eh? So I thought, oh, you should hire her earlier. But then after a week, I discovered something amiss. My, my daughter started, you know, telling us that, Mom, my, my thing missing there. You see, as a young girl, she was about 13 years old then. But then 14 already. And she said, my, all my cute, cute things, ah, you know, girls like those cute, cute things. And all these cute, cute things are not expensive, you know. They are cute, but very precious to my daughter. They, they went missing. So we thought, my... my my wife and myself, we don't need those cute things. The only cute thing is her. So, so who is the one? Chief suspect. The helper, right? 
And true enough, so later we found that all those cute things were in her possession. So you know what happened? I sent her home immediately. You know, I sent her home because I thought, wow, not, not good to have someone who is not really honest to be in the home. Right? I don't think it's good. <coughs> and then, subsequently, we hire other domestic helpers. But I want to tell you this. I have one domestic helper who is, we, we trust so much because every now and then, she will return the, the money I placed in my pocket that I've forgotten in my trousers, especially. You know, and say, Sir, your, your, your money, you know, and still wave at me. You know? Wow, not bad. You know, not a lot. Could be only $5 or you know, could be $2 or $10. But, but no, she did it one time, she did it two times, she did it three times. But you know, as far as we are concerned, we trust her. We know that this is a good helper. Hard to find. You trust her. See, trust is one. But having said that, I only may, let me also quickly clarify. Uh, not all domestic helpers are with unclean hands. Uh, no, no, no. In fact, all my experience, uh, I have all very, very good uh, domestic helpers. Uh, those who are no good, actually, it's only less than 5%. Uh, if you say that all the time you're a bad domestic helper, maybe it's a bad boss. I'm not sure. Uh. So, so, so they, they, they win our trust because why? When they are honest, right? Don't you think that God is the same? We win God's trust if we were to honor the Lord with what God expects of us, right? And, and God used this term, cheater, I and mean, this is very serious to me. And by the way, trust is earned and not convert. Right? And if we want, to want God to trust us, then we have to learn to honor him first. See, can God trust us with a lot of wealth? See, we, we cannot handle a certain amount of wealth. And, and if God were to give us more, it, it may not help us more than it will destroy us. Right? It will not help us. We, we think that if I got a lot of money, then you will help me. You know, I think we all have seen things like that happen, not in church, though, but in life, right? You, you see a couple, they are struggling, <coughs> and, and they, they hardly make ends meet. As a couple. Then they work very hard. And then they work very hard. And then they became, financially, they became better off. You know? And then slowly, they, they, they build out their wealth. And when they are well off, then the trouble starts. The trouble starts. Now, you know, you got more time for all the other funny things. Last time, too busy for nothing. Too busy just to do business. Now, you can afford to be easy, you know. So wealth sometimes may not be exactly a blessing. It all depends on who handles it. And so, you see, if, we, if God cannot trust us with the wealth that we had, then you think God will give us more? No, so honor the Lord and we will receive a blessing. And, 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 and God has strong words. And, God, and we, by the way, you cannot outsmart God. We cannot outsmart God. God is always smarter than us. We never win and we never will. And it is not to our advantage. Now, I said this not to reprimand anybody. Right? I'm not saying this to reprimand anybody. I want to encourage you to, to enter into you know, that, that path of blessings. Because it's really your blessings. Thirdly, when giving little is much. Mark chapter 12, verses 41 to 44 says this. Jesus sat down near the collection box in the temple and watched as the crowds dropped in their money. See, during Jesus' time in the temple, uh, there is a collection point. And, and that is a very interesting way, you know. In fact, we should introduce it here. The collection box, uh, it's not like ours outside there, you know, we have a s slot there that is like envelope, you put in your, you know, your tithing envelope, your offering envelope, etc. <coughs> Theirs is, they have a, like an inverted, not a trumpet, you know, you know, it's like a trumpet shape. And then below is a collection box. So when, when the Israelis, they want to donate or give, they will bring their coins, their, you know, and they will 
and they will be it will generate sound one, you know. You have tang 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 tang. So imagine now the rich man uh, uh, come and then they pour in by maybe a box or a bag, you know. That's why Jesus says, Many rich people put in large amounts. So so rich men will come. And then they will take out their bags and you know and they will pour. And you can imagine, I uh, imagine for you, uh, you hear the sound. Tang 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 for maybe about five minutes. Uh. Right? They they don't give hundred dollar notes and you know, they don't write check either, no? So they tang 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 tang. Then what happened? Then the poor widow came and dropped in two coins. So what happened? The poor widow came, dig dig, ting tang, over already. <laughs> over already. Then Jesus called his disciples to him and said, I tell you the truth, this poor widow had given more than all the others who are making contributions. For they give a tiny part of their surplus. But she, poor as she is, has given everything she had to live on. So the poor widow gave two mites or two copper coins, right? And in and, and the eyes of Jesus, she has given more than all the rich men has given. So God is not looking at the quantum. More than God is looking at the heart's attitude. Because for her, what is two mites? Two mites are nothing. Two mites don't go very far. They cannot even buy one packet of chicken rice. Cannot. Maybe now can only buy two sweets. I don't know. Um, it depends what kind of sweets. Huh? Like one stick of those ice cream every four dollars, right? Right? If I'm not wrong. When I see that one, I dare not eat. Like. Very painful to eat, no? Four dollars one ice cream, like. Ayo. Eight dollars one cup of coffee, like. Ayo. And what can two mice do? And Jesus said she gave more than all the other people. So giving to God is not about quantum. It's about the heart's attitude. What you can afford. What I can afford. So, so giving a lot is good. It may encourage you. Don't, don't say that now I give too much. Then God will be pleased. Please don't do that. Because if you can afford to give 2,000, you give too much. Then I, I must tell you the story of the person who feel very painful when his tithing increases. You know, once upon a time, there was this poor man. No? So he, he, one day he approached the pastor. He said, Pastor, he said, I'm not doing well. I only can offer one dollar tithe. He said, can you pray for me so that I will you know, be better off and I, I, I have more capacity, uh, ability to make more money so that I can tithe more. So, so the pastor prayed for him. And lo and behold, his tithes increased from a dollar to ten to a hundred and to a thousand. See, when it starts increasing to a hundred and then five hundred, then he begins to feel the what? The pain now. You know, I don't see any reaction from you. He begins to feel the pain now. Then when it comes to a thousand, it's very painful. And he struggles. Every month, he struggles. So he went and approached the pastor. You know, he's an honest man. He approached the pastor. He said, Pastor, I want to tell you very honestly. You know, now I'm feeling the, the pain uh, when I tithe. So the pastor said, oh, it's very easy. It's very easy. I can always pray for you to, re to reduce your tithe back to a dollar. You didn't get it. Just like giving, paying tax, you know. There are many people who, when they pay tax, they grumble, they feel, you know, this and that, you know. But you know something? When you and I are in a position to pay tax, simply means you have earned enough that people see you up to tax you. Last year, they never even bothered to tax me. <laughs> I'm waiting for them to tax me. The more, the merrier. You understand now? Understand this logic. 
Oh, so you pray to God. God, I want to pay more tax. <laughs> Don't look at you know the authority and then wow, blame the authority. You are not wise. I, I I want to pay a lot of tax. In fact, I like to pay millions. <laughs> Rupia, I mean. Or ruble, ruble now. <laughs> well, see, the Bible describes this widow as poor. And she is widows are normally not well off, you know, by the way. She did not inherit a, 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 a you know inheritance and then now she's well off and no, she was a poor widow. All she had was two mites. The two mites could constitute what? The, all she had for the week, for that day, it means that. And she gave all. So God looked at the heart. And she was financially vulnerable. She had no husband to depend on. The Bible never tells us whether he had, she had children or not. So we don't know. But she fulfilled her obligation. See, it, it was an obligation for all Jews to contribute to the temple. So it was her obligation, and she gave accordingly. And that's it. And Jesus was so pleased. Because Jesus said, other gave out of their surplus, she gave out of all that she had. This. She had many, many reasons to withhold, right? If anybody has good reason to withhold, she has a good reason to withhold. And sometimes when we approach, we look at giving, we, we have good reason to withhold, right? You know, you know how people pay tithe? You know how they calculate tithe? You don't mind, I say it. You all don't hear. You all don't hear, is it? Oh, you want to hear, huh? Okay, good. <laughs> Only Raymond wants to hear. You know how they calculate tithe? They, people ever ask, Pastor, how do I, how do I pay my tithe? Huh? Do I pay my tithe after I pay my tax? After I pay my PV bills? After my transport? After my clothing? After my budget, everything? Then I pay tithe? Correct? There are people who do not know how to pay tithe and then they calculate this way. Let me, let me say this. You can calculate all you want. I think God will be looking at your heart. Now, because God is not looking at the amount. God is really looking at your heart. Right? So, but I've seen this. I've seen people who have been so calculative and then they say, oh, next time when I make my money, when my business grow, I will one time give to God. Tanku ah. Then the person becomes what? Almost bankrupt. But I've also seen people who have been generous and they just honor the Lord they give. And the more they give, the more prosperous they became. You can choose which path to take. My job is to encourage you, not to put pressure. <laughs> right? I, I want to whet your appetite until you afterwards you all will throw in your checks. If she doesn't pay her tithe and does not contribute, no one is going to criticize her. And some, some, for some people, others know our financial situation, and no one is going to so pressurize you or, or say anything because they know that we've got good reason even to withhold, right? This widow has a very good reason. But Jesus identified her for praise because God is looking at the heart, right? Number four. When giving seems unreasonable, you know, this part, uh, this story, you know. When I was younger, I read this part, I, <laughs> I shake my head, you know. Okay, uh, let's read this. First Kings chapter 17, verses 10 to 16. So he, that's Elijah, he went to Zarephath. As he arrived at the gates of the village, he saw a widow, he said, every time we do one, you know, gathering sticks, and he asked her, would you please bring me a little water in a cup? As she was going to get it, he called for her, or called to her, bring me a bite of bread too. But she said, I swear by the Lord your God that I don't have a single piece of bread in the house. And I have only a handful of flour left in the jar and a little cooking oil in the bottom of the jar. I was just gathering a few sticks to cook this last meal. Underline, huh? last meal. So you hold one chan. And then my son and I will die. But Elijah said to her, Don't be afraid. Go ahead and do just what you have said. But make me a little bread. Make me a little bread for me first. Right? Make a little bread for me first. Hey, 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 what kind of prophet is this? Huh? 
you want to hire him as a pastor? Hey, what kind of prophet is this? Uh? Last meal, leh. and then he said, give me first. You know, normally, I, I tell you this, uh, in church, uh, when they have buffet, uh, normally I try to eat last one. No? Normally I try to eat last. You know why? Because if I eat first, I look like Elijah. <laughs> right? We all must case with G, case with G every day. Until you say, no, no, Pastor, you must go first. Actually, in my heart, yeah, yeah, I will go first. <laughs> but, 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 you know, normally, we, you know, I mean, it's etiquette, right? You, you don't go and rush in. And, and this poor widow and her son, last meal, like, by the way, last meal. Then he said, prepare for me. Means she had nothing to eat there. Eh? You are like stretch, stealing from the beggar's bowl, you know? You know what it means? Stealing from the beggar's bowl? When I was younger, I read this. I, I, I don't feel like reading the Bible, you know? Very scary. And I want to name my son Elijah. Then Elijah said this. For this is what the Lord the God of Israel says, there will always be flour and olive oil left in your containers until the time when the Lord sends rain and the crops grow again. So she did as Elijah said, and she and Elijah and her family continued to eat for many days. Now the little flour in her jar and the little oil in her jar were able to what? Sustain. Not two mouths, but three mouths. For as long as the famine lasted. That's what the Bible says. And the flour never exhausts. The oil never dry up. I mean, every day she go and fetch you know, more flour. You know? And the oil pop, 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 or still, oh, I wish it's red wine. You know, they pour and pour, you know, never exhausted. So, so she, she enjoy. Now, see, if giving the, the widows, uh, the poor widow that gave two mic uh, is, is fantastic, uh, then this widow uh, is incredible. Eh? Incredible. You know why? Because it constitutes her last meal, you know. I, you can imagine. If today, we are in the same situation, you know. When there's a famine, no opportunity to find work, no source of income, etc. Right? All our avenue of, of making money are all terminated. And we left with whatever you have. In fact, that whatever you have is your last meal. You know, last meal to many people very important, especially to Chinese, you know. I don't know whether you all watch Chinese movie or not. Before they, last time they chop people say one lah, yeah. So so normally it's very dramatic, man. Oh, they are at the, you know, platform about to be chopped, right? And then someone will come with the last meal, right? And normally the last meal is a good meal, like right? you never eat drumstick, now you eat drumstick, you know. Then you drink wine, you know why? So that you be drunk, you know. Then your stomach will feel you don't want to be a hungry ghost. Ah, uh, by the way, that's only. In, we, we don't believe in ghosts, okay? We don't believe in ghosts. But one can die hungry also. La, huh? So, so see, to the, to the Chinese, the last meal is very, very important. In fact, today in our prison, at the death row, the, the, before they hung someone, before they hung someone, the last meal, you know, is the, the last meal they serve you like in a five-star hotel, you know. No? But I had never been to a death row before. Don't look at me like that, okay? But I, I have friends who... who who works in prison, in fact, you know, very high-ranking officer in prison. Then he said this, the, the prisoner can order one. No? Your whole life in prison, you only can order one meal. And that is your last meal. Because the, they want to satisfy you. They don't want you to go hungry and come back and haunt them. So last meal is very important. Very important to everybody. In fact, everybody knows that to treat a person, you know, if a person is going away, the last meal is so important. And now you have this prophet, so unreasonable. In Chinese, they put in ren qing. Don't understand what is human relationship. Steal from the beggar's bowl. 
and then we want to die. But to her, think about it to her. She eat the last meal, she will die, right? She surrender her last meal, will she die? Under normal circumstances, we will also die, right? So, give, also die. Don't give, also die. But give, serve the prophet first. Then the prophet say, I promise you God is going to supply. Eh, not bad, eh? Not bad, right? Think about it, not bad, right? So, so she, she took Elijah's challenge. So, the Bible says this, that God honor her. See, the moment she took her faith, and I don't know her feeling, you know, I cannot imagine. When she take the flour, mix it with water, and make it into a dough, so that she can bake a, a kind of, you know, a bread. <coughs> and she was flipping it. And then with the oil, you know what's the feeling? You know what's the feeling? You know, painful or not? Painful or not? I'm making it very dramatic. Painful. Heart-wrenching. You know, sometimes when you don't have and you still want to honor the Lord and you still want to believe what God says, when the economic situation is not bright, when the job opportunity is not there, when your bank account has down to zero and then everything is going to the negative and then you still want to honor the Lord and you still want to believe God. You know, those times are very trying times. Right or wrong? Very, very trying. And, and she was in that situation. Very trying. You see, when you and I have a lot, and then we give, like what Jesus mentioned about the rich man, give out their surplus. Any difficulty? Actually, not much difficulty. Right or Not much difficulty. It is when you don't have, and that is your last. And then God says, give to me first. You trust me? It's very hard there. Eh? And this is incredible, incredible. Because the leader, the widow has he, she came to the end of the road. But when she began to trust the Lord and, and honor God's servant, in this case Elijah, the Lord took care of her, right? In fact, the Bible says that they had enough flour and oil until the rain returns. That means when the economic situation turned around. So is it you will trust God enough today? The economic situation, is it bright? See, the Ukraine war is making me a bit angry because the petrol price is very expensive now. Very painful, you know? Wow, $3. Eh. And I pump lousy petrol some more. Eh. I don't pump 98, no. I pump 92 plus 3. 95. And it's really almost $3. Right? I, I, the last few days I didn't pump. But I dare not go there. <laughs> I understand food price will go up Ukraine produce wheat they are wheat producing nation food price will go up oil price has gone up what other prices will go up oh many because everybody now the day I went to coffee shop I drink one cup of coffee oh, suddenly I realized 120 leh. I almost wanted to return the cup <laughs> I, I, that 10 cent will come up very quick 120 or so, so, so is it today economy is it good or bad? People are speculating that well, if the war drag a lot a bit longer, maybe more things will happen, more pressure, more economic downturn, right? You still there to give? If you're not looking for a job, will you find a job? COVID situation is turning around, many ambassadors will lose their job. They'll return back to normal citizen, no more ambassador. So economy is not getting better. Do you, do you trust a lot? See, that is the time which is very, very challenging and the lady went through, right? Sometimes we wish that, oh, the economy is good, you know, then we, we give. No. She, she gave us one very classic example when giving to God is very, very hard. You still trust a lot? Lastly, number five. <laughs> Giving according to your means is a test of faith. 
No, giving according to our means, uh, means whatever means you have, uh, you give, uh, is also a test of faith. Let me explain to you. <coughs> Once, in the Sunday school, uh, the Sunday school teacher, the Sunday school class, maybe like our sister way now, uh, conduct KOTR one, uh, ask the KOTR student, would you give God a thousand dollar? Many in the class, yes. All they are all children, uh. Then she asked again, would you give God a hundred dollar? Many also say, yes. Then she asked the third time, would you give God ten dollars? Many still say, yes. Then she turned to a small boy and asked, would you give God that one dollar in your hand? Then the boy was startled and replied, no, because I only have one dollar. What is the moral of the story? <laughs> the moral of the story is this. To promise to give big is very easy. Right? I've seen this. I've been a pastor for many, many years. And I've seen churches raise funds when they build church, you know. So they're fundraising. So when they're fundraising, so we all think of ways and means to raise funds. And one of the ways to raise funds is what? Through pledges, right? I don't know whether this church has gone through or not. <coughs> Praise the Lord, you have not. And I hope during my administration, we will not. But I've seen it happen elsewhere. And, and sometimes they say, oh, the church needs... 20 million or 10 million. No? Then they appeal to the congregation, they sell their idea, then they give issue pledge card, you know. So the member, all oh, pledge, you know. Wow, some pledge 20,000, some pledge 40,000, some pledge 100,000. Well, all pledge only what? It's like the Sunday school class, I think. Will you give a thousand? Yes! Will you give a hundred? Yes! Will you give ten? Yes! Will you give the one dollar in your hand? No! You see, to give what is in our hand is very hard. Eh? Do not think that, that what you have in your hand is so easy to part. It's so easy to part. See, I always admire Andrew, you know. You know Andrew in the Bible? I tell you, you should make Andrew in the Bible the chairman, uh, treasurer. Because he can con a young boy, huh? con his what? McDonald fish fillet. You know, he brought his fish fillet to attend the meeting, and then Andrew con him his lunch, which is a fish fillet, five loaf and two fishes. Right? That belongs to the young boy. Right? And he can he can out talk, he can persuade, he can move the young boy to surrender his lunch. Well, I tell you, first class treasurer. <laughs> Not easy. Not easy for the small boy to surrender their lunch, no? But let me tell you this. Many people can pledge large amount. You can tell God, God, next time when I earn so much, I will give you so much. God, next time when I earn, I promise. You know, those are all in the future, you know? They're all in the future. But the way God does not trade in the future, no? God does, you know, deal with the present, right? So, let's give to the Lord what God deserves. Give to the Lord according to our means. See, a lot of times we want God to bless us, right? See, I, I, I tell you personally, I, I would love God to protect me, provide for me, and then give me grace, right? Anybody feels that it's not reasonable? Or you don't need it. I think all of us need protection. We need God's providence and we need grace, right? But sometimes this is a unilateral thing, you know. It's a one-way street, like. It's not a two-way street, you know. So you only for us, for God to bless us. Then how about our part? How about our responsibility? Do we honor our responsibility? And I can't stop but to tell you another joke, you know. Just someone sent to me. I don't know whether you may receive it, because once it's in uh, Facebook, uh, everybody receives it. <coughs> this one comes from my Malaysian friend. Two grannies were talking to each other. And then, 
the one granny called Dolly, and Dolly was talking to Ruby. Dolly said, every Christmas, I will send my grandchildren a Christmas card together with a generous check. And he said, year after year, they never reply me and they never say thank you. Then Ruby said, yeah, every year, I also send Christmas cards to my grandchildren. And accompanying the Christmas card, I also send them a generous check. But every year, they will reply me and Dolly was surprised. Hey, how come your grandchildren and my grandchildren are not the same? You send checks, I send checks. You send Christmas card, I send Christmas card. Yours will reply, mine, after that, when you thin air. Then Ruby said, no, normally I don't sign the check. In fact, they say that not only do they say thank you, do you come and visit me? I hope God will not resort to that. But I'm giving God an idea. <laughs> when we ask God, we expect God to send us the check with signature. Right? When God asks us, we've got, we give God a a check with no signature. Only promises. <laughs> so I, I hope that today, as we listen to this, I just want to encourage you that giving to God is a privilege. It's a privilege. Right? You, you, you and I must have the joy of doing. Don't, don't let even my message you know, put pressure on you. Never even feel that way. If now anybody is fainting, I can understand. <laughs> Giving must be a joy, right? Because the Bible says, for God loves a cheerful giver. That's it. So this is exactly what I'm going to do. Uh, I'm going to collect the offering now. <laughs> right? And, uh, but before you give, you know, I just want you to pause for a little while and then allow the Lord to speak to you, minister to you. Don't feel obligated. Don't, 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 don't do it because of the message. You know? Because God really loves a cheerful giver. And then we must always be the cheerful giver. And we honor the Lord. God says, then, then, remember the word then, huh? Then our buns, then our vets will be overflowing and our vats will be overflowing with new wine. That is God's promise. The widow of Zarephath never went hungry after surrendering her last meal. The poor widow with the two mites was highly praised by Jesus. Okay, so let's, let's love the Lord <coughs> with not only in, in, in extract, but Let's love him in the concrete.